On the footy field, you cannot miss Nick Natanui. He's about this high, he's about this wide, he's got the dreadlocks, he is a power-packed individual. Off the footy field, he is a really deep-thinking, warm, wonderful man. As a very, very young fella, he lost his father, and at age just 25, Nick lost his mum. So he was without either parent. It was pretty tough for him. Obviously, you know, had a tough year. Um, I lost my cousin at the start of the year and, and had to go and bury him. And then I lost my mum, um, you know, just the, on the eve of the final. So I had to fly home to Fiji for, you know, a couple of weeks and, and, and go through that process and then come home. So a bit selfish of me, but that grand final week was, you know, obviously meant to be the biggest part of your life. The parade meant to be the biggest thing. But for me, it was all a bit of a blur. Uh, I didn't sleep much the night before the game. And I sat there with my twin brother, um, you know, I initially didn't want to play in the grand final um, weeks leading into it, but then, you know, I, I felt pretty selfish not to play. So, um, yeah, I didn't sleep much before the grand final. And, you know, obviously losing the grand final just probably brought it all to, you know, the forefront. And I think once I walked back into the locker room, it all just hit me that, you know, um, the course of the last month or so, what had happened and what had transpired really hit me. So, yeah, losing didn't really help my case. So, um yeah, it was pretty sad. And then to miss out in 18 just probably made it uh, even more real even again, um, once again. These are deeply private questions, so answer them as you will. You're talking about 2015 and not wanting to play and, and your cousin. Do you want to talk about what happened? With, uh, sorry, with, in what respect? With you, You're talking about the fact you didn't want to play with everything that was going on that year. Oh, yeah, I think probably when I, when I got back to my village, um, I... It's hard. Fijian culture is different. Um, you know, in, back home, we don't have funeral directors. We don't have, you know, like your, your funeral homes that do everything for you. So to hear the news of my mum passing and then having to go back home and, you know, we've got to do it all. So myself and my twin brother fly home and within a day, we're out picking out coffins. We're out picking out flowers, picking out who's going to, um, you know, run the service at the, at the village church. Um, Things like that, you know, going to the morgue, having to having to dress your parents is is a, is a hard thing. Um, you know, there's there's people that do it here for you um, mm -hmm. in Australia, and for me, culturally, that's just what what you do and how it's done. And um, it was hard. It's, it was it's always been eye opening for me, and it's been a pretty big uh, big thing for me having to do that with you know friends or family members um, in Fiji. But when it's your, when it's your mum, it's probably hits home a little different, and it hit home pretty hard that time. And yeah, but I just remember sitting back home in, in the village after it all happened and, and after the funeral was done and the dust had settled and I kind of didn't want to come home. I thought, well, what's the point of playing footy? I guess uh, everyone has their reason why they play footy. And for me, you know, most of my reasoning why was for my mum and whether it was to, to, you know, make her not have to work three jobs anymore and get her a house or mm. um, help support her or um, to make her proud. That was, that were my biggest, I guess, drivers. And, to not have her around anymore, I sort of thought, what's the point? And yeah, it wasn't until one of my uncles sat me down in, in our family home over there and said, you know, kind of don't waste your time here. Otherwise you end up, you know, climbing coconut trees and picking banana leaves, not doing much. So go and make something of your life, go and make something of your career. Uh, they don't really understand footy. They said, oh, you've got a couple of games left, but they didn't realize that we have finals. <laughs> and we have a chance to, to make a grand final, which we ended up doing. Um, so I just, yeah, I had a realisation I had to come back, I had to, I guess, like, what do you say, grow up, man up, like, just get on with the job. So for me, uh, I did that pretty quickly. Uh, but, yeah, I'm human. I think it all hit me, like I said, at the end of that game. You're a young, you're a young man not to have any parents to guide you. How old are you now? Are you 30, 31? I'm 30 now, yeah. 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 So I was 20, 25 at the time. And that, that's always been the hard part for me, I think. The realization, like I've always had my, my struggles and my troubles over the years, and you know I keep a lot of it pretty private. But people don't understand being 25 in a in a foreign country uh, with no family. You know, it was just me and my and my twin brother over here trying to navigate the world. Like people see you at the highs, the highs, and they go, "Nick's got a nice car, a nice house. He's at the West Coast Eagles. He's you know, he lives the life." But I always found it hard being 25 years old walking out of the change rooms after games and all. All the boys are sitting there with their families, um, you know, talking about the win or talking about this. And I'd go home and stare at my four walls. Um, that was always tough. Um, you know, I try to ring home sometimes after games, but they're five hours ahead back in Fiji. So that was always tough for me. And it was, 
yeah, I guess being 25 and not having anyone was um, probably the hardest part. Yeah, and people probably didn't realise that at the time. People didn't see that. Um, and then you don't play good footy at times and people bag you. And that's probably when those things start to hurt more because you kind of sit there and go, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what my life entails or what I deal with on a daily basis. I can't go out and get a coffee down the road without someone harassing me or going to fill up my car. So, uh, yeah, it does feel lonely at times. And you do feel pretty secluded and like you are on your own, but oh, I just find ways to get through. Like, I'm like, I got two feet in a heartbeat and I'm not dead. Like, <laughs> stop whinging, stop crying, get something out of you. You're already sad and upset. Like, get something from it. So, that's always been my mindset. Hey guys, Howie here. Thank you so much for watching the Howie Games YouTube channel. We really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you watch plenty more clips. Now, if you want to get the full podcast from the clip you've just heard, you can see the full link on the description. If you want to subscribe to the Howie Games YouTube channel, which we would love, just click on the button below. And if you want to see more content from the Howie Games, over to your right, all the clips are there. Thank you once again so much. And as always, peace and love.